So a few days ago we had the premiere, actually the co-publication of a symphony transcription by Franz Liszt played by Wolfgang Weller. And so Wolfgang also applies the WBMP, which is the whole beat metronome practice in which the metronome ticks as we believe in the history in the 19th century and the majority of the cases were not indicating the full note of the metronome number but just the subdivision of that. So no wonder in the comment section some people were wondering and saying things like yeah but listen these symphonic transcriptions by Liszt are considered to be today to be the symbols of virtuosity. And yet in the way Wolfgang plays those works in the WBMP, we don't hear that anymore. And then they refer to some modern performances, especially the famous performances of these transcriptions by the great pianist Xtriplin Katsaris. And then happens something what happens a lot, and that's what we're going to talk about. Those recordings were served as a proof, as an example, that people today play those works in what we call single beat. Question remains, if that's the case, that's coming up. Welcome everybody to Authentic Sound. This channel is all about trying to reconstruct as close as possible the original, the authentic idea the composers had in mind when they composed their music. And one aspect of that is tempo, of course. That's the reason why we're spending so much time on tempo reconstruction, because tempo, changing tempo changes everything. The tempo choice sets the floor for the entire composition and not only technical and all aspects that go into the performance practice like accentuation, phrasing, you name it, but also the character of the piece. So changing the tempo is a big deal. And in these Beethoven transcriptions, of course, what's so interesting is that we are not anymore listening to the orchestral version, which we all know so well, but to a pianist playing. And so the point of this video is to show you that the recordings that we have today are sometimes very far off of that so-called single beat metronome interpretation, but at the same time feel as incredibly fast, as if they almost are there. And so let's have a look at the version that Cyprian Katsar is made of the Fifth Symphony in the Liszt transcription. And now as a disclaimer, I make this always when I talk about the work of other musicians. It's not a critic on their work. Cyprian Katsar was one of my gods when I was in Amsterdam. I had his, I think, a Polonaise of Chopin. It was a CD box that I listened a lot he is a wonderful pianist. So if we bring pianists and musicians here on the channel, it's not to criticize their choice, it's not to criticize their work, but we just serve them as an example to share what, to put things in perspective. And that's of course only possible when we use musical performance like this one of Katsaris. <laughs> might surprise you, but Liszt thought that these symphonic transcriptions were kind of sight-readable for first-class piano students. Now, sight-reading this stuff for first-class people and conservatories might be true. I mean, Liszt clearly says you better study them thoroughly, but it's possible to, let's say, make a first draft version just by sight-reading them. And so, that's a first red flag, I would say. Because if we look to Katsaris' work here, he plays none of the movements in the tempo of Beethoven. The first movement he reaches at 104, almost 108, so I will give him that. It's a truly impressive performance here. Keep in mind it's only eighth notes, but nevertheless, what Katsaris does technically is pretty impressive. The next movement, however, he decided for a reason that is unknown, not to play in the 92 8th note that Beethoven gave, but in a tempo that's more something like 72, even going slower in the middle of the piece. Well, that's 25% in the middle between the whole beat interpretation and the single beat interpretation. So the scale is the same thing. Beethoven wants us to play in dotted half note 96, 
Nevertheless, Katsaris chooses a tempo around 60 for the dotted half note. He's speeding up in the middle section around 70, but still that's around 25% slower. So again, here right in the middle between whole beat and single beat interpretation. The Allegro movement he plays in 72 half note, where Beethoven wants us to have 84. Now the interesting thing is that Katsaris didn't decide to slow down because he didn't want to play an 84. It's, uh, his first movement shows exactly that if it's possible he would have played in single beat 84 here. But keep in mind that this movement that requires him to go down about 15% is only an allegro and we are going to talk about that in a minute more because this is really interesting. If an allegro movement by Beethoven already forces pianists and not only pianists, even people like Gardner and Norrington are taking a slower tempo here in this allegro movement, then there might be something that we are missing here. So, and for the presto, same thing. Beethoven wants us to play in whole note 112. Katsaris decided to play in whole note 92. That's slowing down from Beethoven's tempo about 18%. So, let's do as an experiment, quote-unquote, correct Katsaris tempo to the original single beat Beethoven number. And let's see what happens then. We will focus on the scherzo, certainly on the allegro, and a little bit on the presto. important experiment. Why? So often, as I said at the beginning introduction of this video, so often I hear people say that what we are doing here on this channel is playing music half as fast as we hear today. But guys, there is not something as a single beat performance practice. Most performances are slower than the single beat metronome numbers and considerably slower as in this case. So it's important, I think, that you all get to know what the implication of single beat, if it were possible, what the result would be. So let's go to the scherzo first, and I will focus here on the scherzo and the middle section, where you have this nice polyphony. Already Katsaris performs that in an impressive way. But let me now show you what it would sound like if he would have taken the correct tempo. So it's pretty much clear that the reason why he didn't play this in 96 is because this makes no sense, not musically, but it's also technically actually beyond comprehension that people today still think that this is possible. But listen now also what happens when we go from the fast, so-called correct version, the digital sped up version, back to his version. You will have the same impression that you might have when you're used to listening to the Fifth Symphony in a fast performance and go to Wolfgang's version. Listen what happens. And so now we go to an allegro movement. The allegro movement of the Fifth Symphony is an important one because it's not an allegro molto, it's not an allegro vivace, it's not an allegro assai. So it's a normal allegro movement, common time. It's very far from any alla breve sign. There's 16th notes, so this, this is the most normal 4-4 four, four common time uh, bar structure time signature that you can have. And so Beethoven chose for this movement 84, which is remarkably close to, for instance, what Melzel gives in his table, or in the directions of the metronome use. 84, 80 is a very normal um, metronome number, normal tempo for an allegro movement in that time. Melzel connects that, by the way, in the directions to the half note, as Beethoven is given half note 84. Yet Katsaris is below that, is 72. 
And there must be a reason, and the reason is, I think, as we all can hear if you listen to his version, a technical one. There is no option here for you to go much faster than this. And so keep also in mind what this is saying. This is actually for good conservatory students, sight readable. And now don't get me wrong, Katsaris is not just a good conservatory student, he is one of the greatest pianists. He cannot do it, I think we have to reconsider our options. But what happens if I would speed up this recording of him just to 84? Listen. And now again, a short passage played like this in 84 and then we go back to its original tempo like 72 and see what your feeling is again you will see that you have the same feeling of unease like it's too slow that you would have in case you know this symphony so well and you would go to Wolfgang's version let's listen <laughs> come back to the Allegro as the last point of this video, but first let's check the presto. So Katsaris plays around 92, which is pretty impressive already, but Beethoven requires us to play in 112. So I'll give you a short passage of his original tempo and then you'll hear the 112 correction and it will be pretty clear that it actually doesn't make sense. And again, if you go back from 112 to 92, you will not have this presto feeling again. It's remarkable how fast we adapt to speed and how much slower we adapt to again a something slower. Let's listen. And so now as a final point, this Allegro, which already in this performance, as in many orchestral versions, guys, is putting players to the impossibility of reaching that speed. Yet, if we consider this to be as a normal Allegro, a normal thing, this shouldn't be too difficult. And pianists who play this shouldn't be too afraid of playing this in this tempo either because it, are, it requires only 11 notes a second at maximum. Most of this piece is in 8 notes and triplets, so what are we talking about? If we go, if we really take this literally, we go to so journey etudes that are actually much simpler than this, I agree, but those speeds go from 13 to 16 to 19 notes a second, so if this already is a problem, this should be a red flag, but it's only an allegro. So, Let's pretend that Beethoven for a moment was looking at this music and he said, listen, I want to have this in a presto because there was a choice. You have just a normal common time, normal 4-4, normal bar structure. There is nothing, nothing really special about this. So Beethoven could have had the idea of making this piece or turning this piece into a presto. The movement and the notation should allow him to do that because if Allegro already was a speed that was beyond the maximum what we can imagine then this would have been a presto but it isn't a presto it's an Allegro and it's not the only Allegro that has this kind of 80-ish half note metronome mark and so let's pretend for a moment that we are Beethoven and we are going to present this piece to the world as a presto we have a lot of presto tempi as well. For instance, let's just go to Czerny's uh, piano etudes. 108 is a normal presto tempo half note, not even too fast. So listen what happens if we correct this tempo to a presto. So in other words, if we make from this allegro a presto, what still 
should be kind of an acceptable choice. Listen what happens. So now you might think that I've gone too far, but in fact I didn't. When you play music of that time and you have an andante allegretto, an allegro, even an allegro molto, there should always be headroom there. You should have you should have the possibility to go faster. So many of our allegro movements today, the way we play them, are already at maximum speed. There is nothing more to speed up, and yet even though people are playing those allegro movements slower, they slow down in those movements considerably, as Katsarus actually also does here. Every time you get a melody, the tempo goes down, but that's for another video. My point here was just to show to you, to let you feel, to let you experience what single beat actually feels, what it is, because we don't hear that too often. There is not such thing as a single beat practice. Single beat is and will remain forever a theory, not something that we can apply. Because if you want to apply that, you have to apply it for at least 99.5%. I grant you the 0.5% misprints, but that is it. Whole beat proves to be a practice because every week we show to you a musical piece on the past played according to that practice and everything works everything falls into its place we can actually play the notes they're not always easy don't think that time clavier sonata this list transcription is not for all of us in that tempo but everything works we can apply the original pedaling we can apply the original fingerings we can apply the original uh, accentuation not say, not saying that we are already doing that but that, because that's a study on its own but there is so much more room here to develop those things and there is not a single place where we have to compromise even not in instrumental music we have done the the uh, septet reduction opus uh, 22 opus 38 so the trio version with the clarinet and a string player no problem at all <laughs> that's the whole point if we are talking about a reconstruction at one side, we should also talk about the reconstruction at the other side. And that's my final point. I think there is too much talk about this. There is not enough playing. I see some people uh, advocate the faster versions with, with kind of fire and energy and passion, but I don't see their recordings. And that's the reason. If Katsaris cannot do it, we might be just accepted. It's impossible. So guys, just to close this video up, we have two beautiful performances for you in this reconstructed tempi of Beethoven, which is the Wolfgang uh, version of the Liszt transcription of Beethoven's symphony and also the version that Alberto and I made here downstairs at the Fritz Piano and Janis transcription. The links are here. Also, if you want to see more of this, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell also so you stay tuned for every video we do. And Keep us making these videos and reconstructions at full speed by becoming a member of our Patreon site. We really need you and there's a wonderful community waiting for you and a lot of other things. So stay tuned for the next videos and I will see you soon again.